to the big British castle. It's time for Adam and Joe to broadcast on the radio. There'll be some music and some random talking in between. And then eventually the whole thing will just end. the beginning of the show black squadron don't want to miss a thing that's not the way black squadron rolls went to bed at a reasonable hour gotta be sharp on saturday morning that's the secret of the squadron's power black squadron good morning black squadron you are the elite listening force the faithful the few of the few the best of the few the po- what the what are the what? The few of the poo? No, the poo of the few. Black Squadron are the elite listening squad that listen to this show live uh, between 9am and 9.30am every morning. If you're in another country listening live, you're Globe Squadron. There are various other uh, squadron subsets that can be researched. Yeah. Rupert Everett, are you talking about? He was what in another he? country and he might be listening live. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Rupes, what do you think of his new face? Has he got a new face? Yeah, he's had his face done. He's had it totally reconstructed. Especially for his... He made a documentary about Lord Byron. Oh, yes. And he'd had a new face done for it. Because that, that's a Byronic thing to removed. do. wrinkles removed, yes. Mm. Byron was obsessed with being young. Yeah. Was he? Uh, I think so. He was a dandy, wasn't he? he was, Probably. He was vain. He looks very young and handsome now. Does he? He doesn't look like a freaky kind of plastic man. Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> very young and handsome. That's what usually happens when people have surgery oh, on their dear. face. I just had a, a Crank 2 flashback. What's that? It's a film, Crank 2. I watched it last night. <laughs> you had a little flashback. <laughs> I had a flashback. It's traumatised me. Oh. A woman gets um, shot in her plastic bosoms. Right. Mm. Ah, they're, yeah. they're pushing out the boat. They really, of, that was only, that was 15 minutes in. Thinking of great new things to show people. That, that visual just flashed back into my head. You loved Crank 1 as well, I didn't you? I did love Crank 1. You recommended that so strongly that I took it home one Christmas when we had loads of people staying Christmas with us. Christmas with Crank. <laughs> Christmas Crank. I got some Christmas Crank. And so, uh, it, there was an evening, and it was an exciting evening. I said, come on, then, let's watch a film. This is a good one. Everyone's like, what have you got? Oh, it's a good one. It's been recommended <laughs> to me by Joe. You had around. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. is a really good... Joe says, this is amazing. Stuck it on, projected it on the wall yes. and everything. Got everyone to sit around, handed out snack rolls. Crank! 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 And, um, and I just... We struggled right through. And you had the best Crank. evening you've ever had. It was pretty muted. Crank! Gradually, people started to drift away to bed. I'm going to go. I'm oh, quite tired. I'll see you tomorrow. Well, that was a lovely day. Thanks very it's much. It's like screening it in an old people's <laughs> home. <laughs> a bunch of crotchety old granddads. <laughs> Crank's the future! <laughs> <laughs> if you're not into Crank, then you might as well give up on culture. Yeah, yeah. Crank's the new beginning. <laughs> have it's you a new got set of standards. Um, have you got a message for uh, Black Squadron? Come not on. only have I got a message, I've got a command. Yeah. Black Squadron, you're about to be issued your command. Remember, if you don't carry out this command, you can consider yourself uh, summarily ejected from the squadron. Mm. You can kick yourself out of your own front door. Yeah. So we're going to play a record. Just before the record, we're going to give you the command that you have to undertake. Is the record standing by? Okay, Black Squadron, here's your command. Proceed as quickly as possible to a mirror. Look at yourself in it. Slap yourself round the face and shout, snap out of it! Just amount of pots, pans and kitchen implements ever used at once on a pop record. Did you know that? That was Kiss of Life by Friendly Fires. You invented that fact, though, didn't you? Yeah. That was an invented fact. We should have an invented fact jingle We'd on be this playing show. it round the clock. That was an invented fact. That was based on spurious guesswork. Could be the other jingle. Yeah. Kiss of That's Life idea. by Friendly Fires is the song we just play. Friendly Fires are presenting a show on Six Music this Sunday as part of our Month of Mercuries. And uh, they didn't win anything at the Mercuries, I'm afraid to say. But that hasn't stopped them, um, you know, putting their chin up, jutting their chin out and saying, never mind, there's always next year. There's always the chance we might get a Mercury nom next year. Who won the Mercury nom last year? Uh, well, the big Mercury winners were Elbow, weren't they? Ah, oh, were they? Uh, and this year it was Speech to Bell. Mm. I mean, Elbow was sort of well-established before they won the Mercury. 
So there's no question of them fading from view the way some people who have won the Mercury Prize in the past have done. Have they really? Do some people consider it as a bit of a kiss of kiss of death? Well, it's a poisoned chalice for some people, isn't it? Who was the guy, Ronnie Size and his represent? Right, you don't really want approbation from above, do you, if you're a rebellious pop type? Mm, no, exactly. You don't want to be form prefect or You the don't head want to boy. be stroked by the head boy, you want no. to be at the back of the bus flicking Certainly. Vs. Well done, speech to Bell. Well done. We, uh, all the chaps think you've done a brilliant job on your, your album. Your gobbing in the street is the best gobbing in the school. Well done with your flemmy bits. You're a naughty chap, and we think that's great. Top marks. Here's a prize and a check to go with. We've given up trying to get everybody to speak proper... From now on, the whole school going to speak not proper. And you're going to be the leader of them. <laughs> Wicked well done. Grib, grib, grib it. Grib, grib, grib it. Listen, I'm not <laughs> going to dress the same way as you, just so you know, or behave like you, or actually listen to the records you're buying, making, but good job, there's the check. I want people to think I'm cool like you. <laughs> Stand next to you, I give you a prize. Look at me, disco dancing. Speech to Bell, come round for dinner with me. That's what the head of the Mercury's a little song he sung to her just backstage after he'd given her the prize. You know, the people that um, decide the Mercury Prize, the nominees and the winners, are nothing like that. Freddie Mercury. Uh, it's nothing to do with Freddie Mercury. Uh, They're all young, intelligent, groovy people. Nothing like the way we've just characterised It's another made-up fact. It's another made-up fact. <laughs> you see, we just have to have that as a music bed, basically, not a jingle. Now, can you hear that I've got a cold? Yeah. Listeners, Adam came in today looking very under the weather with a with a terrible cold. Yeah. I've got uh, some... You're doing very well done coming in. Got some medicated tissues. Well, I wasn't sure if I should come in. Because, really? you know, a few months back, mm. it was a big deal. Like, on the news, it was like, well, if you've got a cold, should you go into work? Mm -hmm. And the consensus was no. You shouldn't, because it's putting your co-workers at risk mm. of the pandemic! Mm. Um, but then I thought, the pandemic's over a little. You just flinched because Well, I did, because you said that very loud, and I suddenly had a sort of um, <laughs> medical flash <laughs> you frame. Right. I should have covered my mouth with I could my... see the disease molecules flying through the air towards I'm me. I'm covering my mouth with a medicated tissue now. I had a macro flash. Is that better? Yeah, that's you... better. Keep talking. If I carry on talking about that. It's very because of the beard. Sound. Right. I can't do that. That's ridiculous. Uh, but no, I did wonder if I should come in. But then on the other hand, the good thing about having a cold is that it does give a special quality to your voice, right? Mm -hmm. A special kind of a timbre. Yeah, no, it's good. It's sounding good. I sound a bit like the lady. Who's the lady that does the the sort of trails before our show starts. Can you play that thing? The sexy, thing? bored one. The sexy one. She says everything the same way. I'm so bored. Yes, she is. Sexy. Six music. Today from two. From John two. Holmes. Yeah. From midday. Liz Kershaw. What? And now, and now. It's Adam and Joe. Who cares? She just talks like that. Stuff them down the All toilet. All the time. Who Listen, cares? Listen, darling, I'm going to the shops. Do you want anything? Actually, hang on. Tonight. What? Half price. Fish fingers. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want fish fingers for tea? Okay. That's what we'll have. Do you want potatoes? Or broccoli? It's 7.15. Or both. The bill. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I don't know why she extended it there. I the think she bill. got stuck. <laughs> um, also, folks, we've got Song Wars coming up. We failed to tease that so far, 15 minutes into the show. We're going to do that maybe between 10 and 10.30, maybe give them their first outings, or before that, maybe before 10. Who knows? Nobody knows, nobody knows. But we in the next quarter of an hour, sorry to interrupt you right. there, Joe, we're going to do Retro Text the Nation. We're going to be wrapping up our business from last week's Text the Nation, which was our cinema manifesto. Mm. Uh, that's going to happen in the next 15 minutes, maybe even in the next link. Wow. Um, or after a couple of tracks. Here's a free play for you right now, and this is getting into the spirit of our Song Wars back which was all about baths, right? Yes. We, we, we've done bath songs for you, which you can hear after 10 o'clock on the show. So this is uh, the first of a couple of specially themed free plays nice. from me. This is Aphex Twin with Analog Bubble Bath. I like to listen to Adam and Joe But I listen to the podcast, not the live show I used to feel acute frustration Because I couldn't join in with Text the Nation but now my troubles have disappeared Because Retro Text the Nation's here And now my letter might be read out Instead, instead of thrown in the trash and forgotten about 
Yes, listeners, it's time for Retro Text the Nation. And if you don't listen to this、uh, show in podcast form, then this will be a new kind of feature for you. And the idea is to kind of settle business with last week's Text the Nation subject. It's an opportunity for podcast listeners to contribute to the program, you see, because if the show is live and then they listen to the show during the week, then they can't contribute to Text the Nation, right? But with Retro Text the Nation,、mm. they can because they get a. One more chance, right? The、yeah. following or, weekend. Or listen again, listeners. Or listen again. You don't want to make any kind of.、Uh, Actually, I do. Well, you didn't know what I was going to say. You don't want to make any kind of.、Uh, and now you've said you do. I do. What if I was going to say you don't want to make any kind of、uh, small fascist state that you command over and rule with a hideously violent regime of oppression? That's exactly what, what I want to do. do. Whereabouts? I want to construct it. Up near where I live, up near where you live, <laughs> in a tent. Don't put、and、it all the way up near where you live. You know, because I've got no、Just、truck with the listen again listeners. I want to fight all of them. What? I want to fight. I mean, there's only fifty of them. I can take all of them on. There's no more than fifty of them. Fifty-five thousand. There. There's probably hundreds and thousands. I'm not scared of them. They're hundreds and thousands. They're, I'm supposed to be impressed by them. And the fact they can listen to something on the iPlayer without it sticking every two seconds, I'm supposed to be impressed by that. Well, I'm you're not. Gonna, you're going to regret that. You've alienated a massive tranche of listeners. I thought you were going to say I've alienated Tron. You've <laughs> alienated a massive Tron. <laughs> I've alienated Tron. That would be awful. Listen,、anyway. we should get on with this because、okay. the news is coming up and we'll run out of time. Yes. But last week's text the nation subject was、uh, contributions to a cinema manifesto. Ten points, which will improve the enjoyability what of cinemas around、yeah. the country. Improving the experience of going to the cinema. Okay, so we've got thirteen candidate points.、Uh, we, you've got to tell us, Adam, which one of these are going to make it onto the manifesto. All right. This is from Gary Chamberlain. He says, and this was a good one. Cinema should have headphone sockets in the seats. I like it. We're going for that. That's going on the manifesto. I、yes. really like that.、A、tick.、One. Tom in Loughborough says, when the film is on, the cinema should be engulfed in utter darkness. The only light in the room should be from the projector. Absolutely. So he wants exit signs got rid of, any kind of distracting points of light. You can have little glowy exit no, signs. No, no, no. Tom no. says no. No, no health. No、safety. other light apart from the projector. Fair enough. Yes. Yeah, I like it. People might get hurt, but it's a small、mind. price to pay for, for enjoyment. Paul in Maidenhead: All popcorn should be crushed and chewed so that when eaten, it does not disrupt the film. Yeah, we discussed this in detail. We did. Like fe- whether you want spotty teenagers feeding you food like a bird, pre-masticated popcorn. <sighs> Is there any way we could just get attractive people to do it? Sexy people. Then I would really go for the idea. Like the shop Abercrombie and Fitch apparently only employs really sexy staff. Did you read about that? They've got in trouble for discrimination. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. So it would be a bit like that. Right. Discrimination. So, sexy discrimination. So you'd prefer like a sexy staff member? You'd yeah. You eat masticated food from a sexy staff member. Duh. All right. That's a no-brainer. I'd, eat, I'd do it. That's I'd it. It's in. It's、yeah. point number three. Point number four. <laughs> seats should be magnetised to stop people going to the toilet more than once. Said Dave and Mike. Even if this involves inserting metal into their buttocks. You know, this is a fun idea. It's a fun idea, but I, I'm I not going for it. It's totally impractical to insert metal into the buttocks. Just quickly, I'd say it can be done. That kind of quick surgery is practised by the NHS no, all the time no, now. No, no. Plus, I like going to the loo. All right. Uh, people must clap and cheer when the film certificate is shown at the beginning of the film to show their excitement. That's a kind of retro thing that people used to do in the past. They've stopped doing. We're going to force people to. Yes. Yeah. Cinema passport. You receive a stamp every time you see a film, so you can show off about the films you've seen. What do you think? You don't like that? I'm not so sure about that. That's、one. a bit.、Positive. I don't like passports at all in general. It's going out. Cinema should provide armrests for each seat to a av- to avoid elbow jostling. Yeah. 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 I'm worried. I think we're going to cr- crash the news. We got two minutes. Uh, coats on seats are acceptable, but those seats should be paid for. The,、uh, there isn't a name after this. This came in from a very <laughs> opinionated listener who we suspected might be a cinema manager. manager. Of a cinema. <laughs> Wants、yeah. to make some extra money. No, that's not、It's、coming、it. off.、Uh, well, this means you've rejected three, so we've got to have all the rest. Seats should be assigned in height order, so tall people always sit at the back. That's from Robin. It doesn't have to、Heisman. be a ten-point plan, though, does from it? Church, yes. Okay. <laughs> from Church Crookham, so that has to go in. Yeah. David Des Moines from Iowa in the USA says no advertisements or previews before the movie starts. The movie will start at the stated time, not 15 minutes later after the previews and advertisements. What?、Um, what's he saying there? Is he banning trailers?、Um, Are you all right? Yeah, I'm just looking at his message and thinking about it with my mind.、Uh, I don't know. 
We don't, <laughs> we don't know what he's saying. <laughs> hey, here is someone called Tron. Tron Halstvet, hey. formerly of Glasgow, now in Q8, says there should be a brief signal to identify that this is the last big important scene. This will help with confusing forward slash crap films and also gives you an appropriate bladder release countdown. Uh -huh. Oh, this is confusing, isn't it? I think he's talking about a sort of klaxon going off when an important scene happens so you can pay attention. Yeah. Would yeah. you have that klaxon go off? No, I think no. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I th should we go to the news and come back to bad. this? <laughs> no, there's no way we're coming back to this. Are you insane? <laughs> That's great. Thanks very much for all your suggestions. That's the end of our plan. It doesn't have to be a ten-point uh, plan. It's a brilliant cinema manifesto. We appreciate all your help. Listen, with we'll that. tidy this up and stick it on the blog in tidied up form. We've we, got to stand down the morning. Black Squadron, and then we'll go straight into so the business. news at nine thirty. Here on BBC Six Music. Stand down, your work is done. You've earned yourself a nice warm bath and maybe a nice little bun. I was just saying while that was playing, there's a lot of longers in that song. I mean, that's a brilliant classic song, Roxy Music, Love is the Drug, right? But still, there's like long sections that if I was the editor in there, if I was producing that, I'd just say, listen. No one's going to mind if we just nip that bit out. What, bits when he's not singing? <laughs> when he's going, oh! Yeah, I mean, are you, oh! applying, are you applying your Song Wars mind to that? Because oh! you couldn't really get away with that in the Song Wars, could oh! you? No, absolutely. You'd have to, you'd have to think, I'm going to lose him. If I, if I spend 16 bars just going, oh! But that's the difference between a real song and our songs. <laughs> in real songs, you can get away with that kind of thing. Yeah. In our songs, you think, well, i got to be imparting some sort of information. But this is what I'm saying. Points. Even Brian Ferry is not allowed that level of indulgence. Oh, come along. That's rubbish, isn't it? Yeah, it's rubbish. He can, he can OO us he whenever, can do whatever he wants. whenever he wants. In a lounge suit. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what I'm saying. I thought it sounded lovely and it was integral to the structure of the song. Listen, I absolutely love the song. I'm not bringing it actually i'm bringing it down aren't i <laughs> super grass not super grass but hot rats do a cover of that uh, right. track on their forthcoming would well, you are you saying they album. do it better do they cut out the uh's well if not... they don't then you haven't got a leg to stand on no i don't do i that wouldn't be the first time though no i'm more or less hobbling around yeah without a leg your to stand peg leg on. buckles, <laughs> peg leg buckles. <laughs> here comes peg leg buckles i got no leg to stand on <laughs> 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 yeah, he's only got one leg to this stand. Son, this film's going on too long. If he's ever trying to make a point, you just kick, <laughs> kick the peg leg away and he falls over. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this film is supposed to be the best film ever made. I don't think so. I would have cut out the middle bit. Why? Oh, I don't know. I haven't got a leg to stand on. Kick the leg. So listen, how did you get on with your Song Wars this week? Um... um well, I did it. I mean, the thing about Song Wars is that it's just, it's not so much the actual man hours that go into the song, it's the psychological pressure. <laughs> the psychological find? pain, yeah. Yeah, it squats on your psyche the whole week. The, the, comp the when competition. When did you complete yours? Last night at midnight. Really? Yeah. Uh, if you're a new listener to the show, uh, we make these Song Wars songs during the week. We decide on the theme, well, la in last week's show, so we've had exactly a week. And, you know, we've both got jobs. Yeah. Yeah, this is just a hobby, really. We've both got jobs. One of us has even got a family. Yeah. So it's very <laughs> hard to uh, get the songwriting in. Yeah. Uh, but we managed it, right? How about you? Well, I finished mine at about nine last night, ten last night. Confident? I said, I, I basically decreed that I would watch Crank 2. Oh, right. I will watch Crank 2. <laughs> uh, but no, I'm not confident at all. Are you not? No. Not just saying that? I'm not just saying it. Mm. I think, put it this way, if... My song didn't exist within the context of Song Wars. There's no way it would ever its existence would be justified at all. Right? Do you know what I mean? There's no reason actually, it would exist. Do you think it's actually negatively <laughs> occupying space? <laughs> Possibly, yes. Do you think it actually it's existence is utterly, utterly is offensive? Um, yeah, and wasteful. <laughs> yeah, it's a waste of my time. <laughs> it's a waste of time on the program. It's thematically a waste. I think it's destructive towards the subjects that are mentioned in it. How could we get rid of it? Like uh, you'd have to, you'd have to get rid of. First of all, in you'd the have hadron to get, collider. I yeah. don't know. You'd have to do some kind of antimatter thing. You'd to have it. to get rid of. First of all, you get rid of all the files. 
mm. you have to have some kind of eternal sunshine of the spotless mind style mind mm. wipe mm. to get rid of the any tune that might mm. be in there and then something would go wrong and i'd be trapped in the yeah. song or something yeah anyway you can find out whether that level of alarm is justified after 10 o'clock when we unveil our song war songs about baths but right now here's some real music this is la rue with her crazy hair and a track called i'm not your toy yeah uh, that's larue with sound of the 80s i'm not your toy do you think if that was released in the 80s it would chart do you think if that was released in like when were yazoo number one with only you was that 82 or something 81 82 yeah do you think if larue was up against yazoo larue th- uh she would win it that's a very very good or question. do you think she would be you know completely overwhelmed by the purity and you know genuine novelty of 80s uh plink plonk music uh, certainly it's quite, it's a more complicated sound. Yes or no? More complex sound. Yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> Answer me! Yes. Yes, she would what? What? Yes or no? It wasn't really a know. yes or no question. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're yeah. feeling very weak. <laughs> Poor old I've man. I've got a cold, I've run out of medicated Count tissues. Count Buckley's is under the weather. I just got like a small pack of you medicated tissues. You know what, Count tissues. Buckley's? I should have got a big one. You'd do a brilliant, uh, cold and flu advert. Yeah. In your cape, like Count Dracula, but you're Count Buckley's. Right. And you've got a cold. Uh Uh-huh. And I keep sneezing on my victims. Yes, exactly. And they're going, oh, that's disgusting. I'm going to drink. (laughs) Excuse me. (laughs) People love vampires (laughs) in cold and flu adverts. Yeah. And then you take the remedy and and it's fine. You And then you suck a lady's blood out of her neck. Mm. You know, uh, I just thought of a revolting spin on it. You could <laughs> you could have a vampire that sucks snot out of people's noses. You know that like you have to do for babies, that right? That's revolting. What? Well, hang on a second. Well, you've discussed this before. You don't have to suck. <laughs> what do you do <laughs> then? How do snot. you get how do you get snot out of a baby's nose? Is that you're not... what you do? Yes. What you put your mouth over it? In the olden days, you would just put your mouth over no, it and but suck you've it. You've done it. No, now they've got tubes. They've got really? like they, there's tubes, kind of like bongs. I don't know if you've ever come across a bong. It's easy. You, do you not know how to do that? You just blow up the bottom. <laughs> the baby's bottom. You blow up and it the baby's fires bottom out and it fires out. Don't Everyone do that. that. Listen, there might be some really thick parents listening and they try it. And then Come they on, would... there aren't any thick parents in Britain. No, that's true, especially not listening to this show. But, um, no, you don't obviously blow up the baby's bottom, but you do have to suck out the snot somehow, sometimes. Uh, but you can get special tubes, medicated tubes, that kind of convey the snot to a central... I was going to say, like... otherwise that would explain your illnesses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, non-stop diet of baby snot. That's a charming thought, isn't it? Mm. But I was thinking, like, we got into this because the vampire could maybe do something similar. Yes, that's a good idea. Yeah. That's a good idea. We'll jot that down on the ideas list. <laughs> it is a very good idea. <laughs> Pop it in it? the uh, idea bank. Yeah. What now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it Boggins? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Boggins, the Adam <laughs> and Joe dogs come <laughs> bounding into the studio, <laughs> full of vim and vigour. Here, Boggins. Oh, Boggins. It's all right if I lick your face. No, I don't understand what Boggins is saying, because he's a dog. He, he's, of course, he makes, he said, I don't know why I've gone Australian, but he <laughs> says things that sound a little bit like human uh, speech, uh, but you really can't understand it. He's going to say something sausages. again. Sausages. What? Sausages. Uh, I, I, bought, I bought some sausages. I don't know what he's saying. I've eaten a rat. He's lost it. I found a bird. Say I, something that sounds like words, Boggins. I ate, I ate a bird and then I rolled in poo. <laughs> I, I'm sweet. No, nothing. So, Boggins is a little bit stinky. I ate, I ate a bird. Can I lick your face? I wonder if that's mud. Pat me, I love you. I'm going to bite your legs. It's a shame he can't talk, otherwise he could tell us whether it was mud. Is that mud, Boggins? Part, part, part mud, part poo. Just sniff a bit of it. <laughs> Oh dear! It's been on there for a while. I'm gonna, like mud and can I lick your face and legs? I'm gonna bite your hand. <laughs> Ow! Ah, Boggins. So, so it's just playful, being playful, just playing. All right, come on, Boggins, out. Okay, out, Boggins. Have you got a? Get out! Ah! Out, oh. Boggins. <laughs> Boggins. <laughs> oh, Boggins. Prefab, prefab, prefab sprout. <laughs> Have you got prefab sprout? <laughs> oh, Boggins. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all right? <laughs> Do you mind that? Oh, do you like that? Boggins. Go on, play some brief F sprout. Here's some brief F sprout. That was the Kinks with Victoria. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Uh, Count Buckley's listeners has quite a bad cold today. Are you, how are you feeling? Um, I feel okay. Like, I'm over the worst. I'm over the aches mm-hmm. and pains, mm-hmm. right? But now I'm just in the snotty phase. Snotty phase. Snotty phase and coughing as well. Someone's gone out for some special tissues. Yeah, because I only got a small pack of medicated tissues. I want a big pack! 
Um, listen, I was in HMV this week. <clears throat> the popular High Street Music Store. Other High Street Music Stores are available. But not for long. And they just... Uh, what do you think is going to close? It's all going to close. It's all going to close. Well, in an attempt to keep it open, they had shipped in hundreds of new Beatles box sets. Oh, Yeah, right. they came in during the week. And what they tend to do on Oxford Street uh, in HMV is they pile them up just inside the doors. Uh -huh. So you get this sort of weird cluster. I think I might have walked past the morning they were released. And you get a weird kind of cluster of uh, hardcore Beatles fans. Yeah. Older gentlemen. All gathering round the Beatles box set, sort of picking them up, touching, turning them around, them. examining them, <laughs> deciding whether they can afford them. Exactly. Yeah. Similar thing happened when they bought out the Neil, the massive Neil Young box. Yes. Well, he... lots of Neil Young people came out of the woodwork, and yeah, they were sniffing around them. Sure, they were. A lot of people just lived inside them for a while. Mm -hmm. But the Beatles uh, have basically seized the zeitgeist last week, didn't they? Mm. BBC put lots of Beatles programs out, and they tried to get us all to pay attention to the release of their box set. And I was watching the one of the shopping channels. They were selling them on the shopping channels as oh, yeah. well. And there was a woman really going hell for leather about how essential these purchases were. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because what is it? The first time they've been digitally remastered or something? It can't be the first time. What is it? What's new about them? I think so. Apparently it's the first time that they have gone back and cleaned up the masters so right. they've got rid of all you know a few little glitches here and there and they've basically done a, a whole new pristine digital reprogram reprogramming job on them well she spends about 20 minutes convincing me that i need to buy the remastered beatles box set right. and then she does a switcheroo the camera pans to the right and she's got specially new released mono versions of all the albums as well and oh, she's yeah. going now if you've already got them digitally remastered you will be amazed by the quality but of course it's not how they were originally intended to be heard <laughs> these are the original mono recordings exactly as lennon and mccartney intended you to hear them so she does another 20 minutes about having to have the mono ones also it's not how they intended you to hear them it's That's just what she said right it's just how they happened to come out with the technology that was available at the time i'm confused I, i'm not going to buy either but i don't know which one to buy mm. i don't know if i would be, I don't really care about buying the new remastered ones, I must say. Because I've got them, and then I've read lots of articles about, oh, the, the bass range is much more impressive now, and, and they've fixed the uh, dropout on uh, <laughs> She Said, She Said in the, you know, 2 minutes 58 or whatever it was. I don't think that's true. <laughs> that would be a lot of Beatles fans going, there's no dropout at 2 minutes 58, and She Said, She Said. But, you know, that kind of thing. I'm not fussed. I, I, you know, I got used to the versions that came out when when you know they came out originally and the ones i bought on cd the first time around when they were available and that's the it's ones it's confusing like. isn't it because yeah. if it was a film you kind of want the sound to be remastered but you don't really want the picture to be messed with did you ever have a you want it as clear as possible but you don't want it like retouched no or added to or anything do well, you yeah but in the, the movies are way ahead of the record business in that respect i mean directors have been messing with their work for years mm. now, they, they led the way they really did and you think it's only just beginning well with, uh, if you music if you imagine like the level of fiddling that say steven spielberg did with et mm. if you applied that to an album like Hunky high Dory, level fiddling. you know what i mean like if someone like bowie went back and started doing that level of fiddling on any one Has of anyone his anyone ever done that classic 70s like, albums, tweaking lyrics yeah adding a little solo here that would be outrageous you has anyone ever done that no because it would I be think, pointless I think, we, I think we should do it for song wars you reckon yeah i think we should remaster some tracks isn't that a good <laughs> idea for song wars <laughs> Yeah, I guess. We could take the original and add to it. Uh-huh. Yeah? Now, yeah, all right, let's do that next. Okay. But we're going <laughs> <okay. laughs> to... We're going to unveil what we did do for this uh, week's Song Wars um, in about ten minutes or so here on BBC Six Music. But before that, here's Empire of the Sun, mate. Oh, great, I mate. I, you know what? I love this oh, one. I love this because one. he just gets... He gets on no. a groove, right? Absolutely. He gets on a groove and he just yep. surfs the groove. I love surfing. I love surfing, don't you? I'm born to surf. This is called Walking on a Dream and that's what it's about. It's about what happens when you walk on a dream, mate. So you're having a dream, right? Terribly fragile. And you have the dream and you're asleep. You're having a dream. You can't have a waking yeah, dream. Yeah, yeah. There has to be when you're asleep. And then you start walking on it. Right, right. And it's nice. It feels nice because it's a nice, soft dream. Yeah. But then what if it's a nightmare? 
Oh, mate. And you fall through the dream. What a nightmare. Your foot gets stuck in the dream and you can't carry on walking. You trip over on the dream. You hurt your elbow on maybe the corner of the dream. Oh, I'd have to sue the dream. Exactly. Have you been injured in a, in a dream? Have you tripped or fallen in a dream while you were walking? Contact who? Who do I contact? You contact the people that done that song. Empire of the Sun. Contact Empire of the Sun. They're dream lawyers. <laughs> yeah. Are they? Yes. Well, they tell deal, me, mate. They de- yes, or they deal it, with all is, the litigation. Is this a joke? To do with, no, it's not a joke. You're trying to mess with my mind? I'm not trying to mess with your mind, mate. Don't lie It's me, not mate. a joke. I don't understand. It lies. was about I'm walking very on dreams. Will you listen to me? I'm trying to explain. It's about they deal with dreams. Walking on them, Mate, you know they what? deal with dream litigation All right. and they dream construction. You know that they've got mate, to be mate, properly mate, mate, mate. built, otherwise mate, you mate. can't walk on it. I'm mate. exhausted now. You've mate. exhausted me, mate. Get your surfboard, yeah, and go do a bit of surfing. I will. You are really wound I'm up. I'm totally racked up now. You've ratcheted me right up in there. Go and surf, mate. I am going to go. It's and the only surf, thing that'll mate. cure it. Yeah. Meanwhile, what are you going to do? <laughs> I'm going to um. <laughs> Bum, 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 that was obviously bum, bum, bum. a cue for you to say, meanwhile, I'm going to launch Textination. Yeah, but I'm not the one who made up the subject, so I can't. I didn't make it. Come on, let's did just it, do the it. jingle. Textination. Text, text, text. Textination. What if I don't want to? Textination. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Yes, listeners, it's Text the Nation time here on the Adam and Joe radio show on BBC Six Music. This is the part of the show where we give you a, a, a theme, mm-hmm. a talk topic. Yeah. Yeah, a chat point. And you contribute your opinions and reactions via our text number, which is 64046. Uh, Correct? Uh, yeah, or you could email us. If you're listening to this show during the week as well, then you have to email us. You can't text us. Uh, and the email is adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk. Now, we're going to keep the explanation or the setup for Text the Nation this week very brief, mm. right? This is going to be the briefest of all the setups. Names for body parts. Right? Like it. Pet names for body parts. Mm. Mm. What I mean, do you mean you might give them a, a name like a person? Like Alfred? Or could, John Thomas? Maybe you might. Yeah, I mean, the obvious place to start is in the groinal zone, right? Mm. And that's by no means where we should remain. I would like to make it perfectly clear. In fact, we would like you, if you can, to uh, tell us about the other names for the other body parts that you yeah. have. Don't just stay in, in the... Uh, Underwear area. In the Congo there. Underwear area. Yeah, because that's no good. But in while the, we are in, in that the, area... In the Congo. Yeah. Like yeah. in... Isn't it shaped that way? The Congo? I don't know. I don't I'll know what I'm talking about. Um, so, like, for example, um, with children especially, mm. you know, when you're a little chap, your mum refers to your little chap, um, gives it a special name, right? Mm-hmm. Why are you looking worried? <laughs> I'm just trying to think. What was your one? I don't know. I'm trying to think. Well, my mum is uh, from Chile, right? Mm. So she used a Spanish word, birulo. Right. Uh, what does that mean? She, well, the actual literal translation happens to be knob. But it's like, you know, for a button or a, a dial. Yeah. That kind of thing. But she applied it across the language barrier. <laughs> to, to a us. button or a knob. Yeah, in a sort of endearing way. A dial. Birulo. Um, and, uh, I think that was the only one that... <laughs> <laughs> Extraordinary inhalation of breath. Having <laughs> a breakdown. It's because... It's because that's all I've got. <laughs> that's all that's there right. is. It's okay. That's all there is for desolation. <laughs> Just that one word. The b- Say it again. Pirulo. P I R E. P I R U L uh hello. Well, having encouraged people to stay out of the Congo, <laughs> your one example is very I know Congo Central. <laughs> I'm hoping that Say it other again. Pe- Pirulo. Pirulo. That's <laughs> nice. You're hoping that other people will have little pet names. Yeah. Areas of their body. Areas I mean, of their body. 
The uh, Congo area is is a place where you need to have non rude names. So I think that people are more likely to have made up names for you know dangerous yeah. areas. I guess I'm thinking Congo because it's sort of dark and jungly, right? Does anyone like name their hands or their arms or their legs or their nibbles? Well, now you put it like that. What nibbles? Nibbles. <laughs> it's like weebles. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Uh, w- w- tootsies. Your tootsies. tootsies. Of course. Now we're back. Now we're rolling. On track. Come on. <laughs> now we're Come back. Come on. on. Track with tootsies. It's going to be Sony nomination time it's again soon. It's going to be good. So, so <laughs> text, in, text in your alternative names for your body parts. <laughs> 64046. This is good, man. This is going to really come Tootsies. come around. We've got our doubts about this, but give it. Here's now. what. It, here's how it might work, right? Mm. Just to just to mm. travel you into the future a little bit. Um, Dan in Clapham says that he calls his elbow. El, 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 oh, Garvey, Guy Garvey. <laughs> <laughs> That's an example of a good one we might get in. Yeah. But you made that one up, obviously. You I haven't mean, had much time to think. No. Listeners have got lots of time to think. Exactly. Uh, so there we go. Give your ideas to us <laughs> in texts via 64046 or the email adamandjoe.6music at bbc.co.uk. We're going to do Song Wars very soon. Yeah. Right? That's proper content. This is a feature that, we that we've worked out. It's all pre-prepared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's all going to be fine. That's why everything else is so ropey, because yeah. yeah, all the energy's gone into the wars. Exactly. Here's Blur with Girls and Boys. It's time for Song Wars. The War of the Songs. A couple of tunes by a couple of prongs. Which will you vote for? Which one is the best? We're putting our songs to the listener test. So check it out. I mean, that's like a LaRue song right there. It is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's too rich, though, for if, it to be LaRue. If she was doing her harmonies on there, that, that could be her next single. That's true. And it's just the jingle for this segment which is called song wars pretty self-explanatory joe and i have composed songs on a theme we've made the songs ourselves such as they are and we're going to flip a coin now to see which one goes first but joe tell tell the listeners once again what the theme was this week the theme was bath time uh we had a listener suggest it didn't we james the producer are you totally on your toes ready with the name of that we've, listener no we're all a bit sluggish Can't this remember. week sorry about that uh, he was name-checked last week. I think it was a gentleman. Yeah. But he wanted a song for his bath time periods to make it nice for him to go to the bath. Um, so is that what you've done? Well, I mean, he could listen to this song conceivably that I've done while he is in the bath. But your it's... song's about bath time. Yeah, yeah, it is about... Well, my song specifically is about cleaning up a dirty girl. Is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that sounds good. You know? Um, what's yours about? Well, mine is a kind of, um, song about David Bowie having a bath. Is it? Yeah. I was thinking about doing Well, that. not only were you thinking about it, but... I mentioned it, it on It was air. suggested, yeah. So why... So I think part of my brain thought that that was the task. That was stuck oh, in my I head. See. Bowie having a bath. So, yeah. Bowie bath. Mm. Good one. Well, we're going to flip a coin right now and see who goes first. It was Rufus Blacklock was the gentleman's name. Well oh, yeah. done, James. He was the guy that came up with this theme. Thanks a lot, Rufus. It was a good theme, I thought. A good, yeah, a good theme. Yeah. Well done, Rufus. Well done. Um, so, call it. What do you... What do you... Uh, I'll go for heads. If it's heads, I'll play mine first. Heads to go first. I kind of want to go first, just to get it over with. It is... Tails. Tails. Not looking good for the cornballs. So cornballs go second. Yeah, you go first. Uh, here is my song. Uh, I won't introduce it any more than to say it's called Special Bath. Oh girl, you're so dirty I love your mucky mind But your body's all so filthy Which I weren't so pleased to find You're so fit But what's up with your personal hygiene? That's why you haven't had a boyfriend Since you were 13 You have the matted hair of an Australian backpacker And in your pants last night I found some cheese and a cracker You say you don't like bathing Cause you're frightened of the water But it's getting crazy, girl, you no, I really think you won't I'll come round to my place tonight We'll have a special bar ooh, 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 ooh. Stop smelling like a vagrant And take the fragrant bar I've got some candles, some petals Some radox and some matey and some batter That's so lower your batter Into the bubbles and the water Which is like 
It's too hot like you, but you'll get used to it the way I had to do. With the smell from your shoes, just take it slow. When the pain from the scalding subsides, it's nice. Sit at the end where the taps are, baby, that's my advice. It's more convenient, you know. I'll take the boring end, cause I'm your special bar friend. Come round to my place tonight, we'll have a special bar. not so bad is it it's nice it's just a couple of rules you need to know before we go on you might presume that heavy petting in the bath is fun but it's uncomfortable and makes it hard to get the cleaning done and perhaps you think that with the bubble bath you're safe to let one go but trust me that's not how it works and when the bubbles burst don't know when finally you may believe that a tinkle in the bath is tops but if i detect extra warmth i'll call the cops Come round to my place tonight We'll have a special bar Stop smelling like a vagrant And take the fragrant bar I wanna rock with you lady woman If you know what I mean But there's gonna be no rocking Unless you're really Oh, what happened at the end there? There's the water coming out of the plug. That's extraordinary. I'm very jealous of your vocoder technology there. It's not vocoder, mate. What have you got going on there? It's uh, uh, pitch, what's it called? Pitch um, shift. Magic tuning. Uh, what is it? Is that a bit of software? You just, you, you on GarageBand, you just mm. go into the tuning yes, 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 and yes. you can shift the... Uh, you, you can yeah, do yeah, auto yeah, pitch. You so you're just... auto, but you're auto tuning separate segments of the same like phrase that you've sung. No, no, no. You just apply auto tune to that really? the vocal track. No. Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah. Do that. I mean, that's another one we could do because a lot of R and B has that uh, sound on it now. Everyone has it. Kanye did a whole album with that, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it loads crazy of crazy. Everyone does that. So I thought that uh, way. Past, well done. Uh, thanks very much. <clears throat> I think that's good. I think you might have blown mine out of the water. Bit of two-step. Production-wise. You reckon? Yeah, mine's much more pedestrian. Uh, we better get it out of the way. This is just a song. Uh, this is actually the song that Bowie sings when he's having a bath. Is it? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I know that sounds like a lie. So this is Bowie in the bath. But it's not. This is the song he sings when he's having What's a bath. What's it called, this yeah. song? It's called Bath Time for Bowie, of oh, course. Yeah. yeah, here it is. Rushed off my feet Tonight I deserve a special treat I know a place I can be alone A private palace of enamel and chrome A secret space where taps are spun And man and water live as one Look. Scented oils and shampoo A place that's just beside the loo Splish, splash Tonight's gonna be As I get in, the water's rise Engulf my dangly bits and thighs The scalding heat nice that cuts This can't be healthy for my nuts I pour a little bubble bath I froth it up and sing and laugh And then the special business starts The scrubbing of the Bowie parts If you want to take a bath Then please take my advice Be sure you don't drop off to sleep Cos it's so warm and nice Don't sit there staring into space Just fiddling with your winky don't forget the water's getting gradually more sticky. Splish, splash, I'm polishing up my glass spider. Splash, splash, I'm soaping my serious moon. Splash, splash, it's time to get out of the My fingers are starting to prune. There we go. That's Song Wars for this week, uh, listeners. What's your one called? A special Bath. It's Special Bath versus Bath Time for Bowie. 
uh, a new email your vote, I think, adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk. It's only email votes, isn't it now, James? So if you're uh, listening via Listen Again or the podcast, you can vote as well and we'll announce the winner on next week's show. You had some good pet names for uh, parts there, the Serious Moon. Well, there's a lot to <laughs> choose from when it comes to Bowie. <laughs> Glass Spider. I was trying to rein that kind of lazy innuendo in. What? <laughs> <laughs> what, which, unsuccessfully you think you're working on news night or something <laughs> <laughs> this is bbc six music and it's the adam and joe program here's some music for you now listeners this is mumford and sons with little lion man he said a bad word he did said a bad word and he didn't do a radio version of it i think they should you know i think like in crete to say a nicer one yeah in crete uh, in crete they substitute the f-bomb for what is it that he says um you're so very special Instead of saying the, the, mm. the F word. You think they should put a non-scary word I in? I think it's just politeness to do so. You can't just leave it blank, you know? I mean, that's just ridiculous. People might imagine laziness. a worse word if you leave it blank. Exactly. Exactly. That would be awful. What's worse than the F-bomb, then? I'll tell you during the next uh, record, oh, during exciting. the news. We were just speculating as well about the fact that um, if you go on our blog, you will see an amazing compilation that someone has done of all the moments that where we talk about Bowie, because uh, we are relatively Bowie-obsessed, I suppose. Although I suppose we, you know, like we're not, we're not like the maddest Bowie fans in the world. We're not mental, right? The, we just really mm. like him. And uh, the, the thing is that we would l genuinely love to meet the guy, and we've gone on about it on this show for, for sort of uh, comedic but value. But someone's gone back through the archives and taken all the bits of us ranting nonsense about Bowie and put them together into one kind of YouTube <laughs> thing, and James has put that on our blog, which is at bbc.co.uk forward slash blogs forward slash Adam and Joe. And uh, it's completely insane, and he'd be insane to come anywhere near us. If, if he heard he, it, I mean, he, he it. would he would immediately apply for a restraining order. Not t uh, to say that the work that the person has done who's put it together isn't isn't very good. No, um, it's a fantastic yeah. editing job. But um, yes, I mean, if I was if I was Bowie, I would just uh, I would think, well, there you go. I have to deal with a lot of these kinds of people, but I'm not going to go on their radio program. There's no way I'm going on their program. There's no way I'm going on that. Listen to the way they talk about me. It's absolutely disrespectful. They think I'm a joke. It's totally disrespectful. I've made some of the most influential music of the last 200 years. And these two buffoons are talking about me as if I'm some kind of sad show freak. These two biffins. <laughs> these two absolute biffins. They're a couple of biffins. <laughs> <laughs> the tall biffin. He can... <laughs> He's done a song about me in the bar. That's absolutely ludicrous. It's I absolutely ludicrous. <laughs> was there was I don't call my parts my serious moon mm -hmm. if we carry on like this there's no way he's ever ever going to come anywhere we were thinking that he might chat to us off Obviously air because he'd know we'd have to be normal I don't think he even would do that I no, think he would, he would move he what would about move into the corner of the room how about this how about this because it's obviously stupid for him to have any sort of live engagement with us on air because we can't be trusted I mean I don't trust us so he shouldn't so what about uh, an email questionnaire mm-hmm so yes, yes, yes. Writ written questions. At a safe distance. At a safe distance. What if we write a series of questions that the listeners could help us formulate them? Yeah. Say five five questions, five key Bowie mm. questions. Oh, well, this is okay. It's at a safe distance. I don't mind taking part in this. And he could just, we could just have an epistolary relationship. Yeah, that would do. Is that, that would work? Word? Yeah, it is. Epistolic. <laughs> Listen, folks, uh, you're listening to Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. It's just gone 10.30 and it's time for the news. That's Prince the Purple Ponce with the ballad of Dorothy Parker. That's from the Sign of the Times album. That was a free play for you listeners, which I chose because it's kind of bath related, isn't it? I mean, yeah. took another bubble bath with, with my, my pants, pants on. on. All the fat and stuff. I mean, it's a strange song. I don't know what he's going on there. It's a about. very elaborate sed seduction technique, mm. isn't it? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to have had listened to the lyrics properly. Yeah, it's it's a wonderful song, though. Hope you enjoyed it. And we will probably be playing our Song Wars songs once again towards the end of the show. In, in, in about a, an hour's time. In about an hour. So if you missed them, you'll get another chance to hear them then. But right now, we're in the midst of Textination. Maybe the best Textination we've ever done. So let's have the jingle. Textination. Text, text, text. Textination. What if I don't want to? Textination. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. 
So, Adam, remind us of the subject for, for Text the Nation this week. Well, Joe, it's very simple. It's uh, We're just talking about pet names that you have wow. for various body parts. You used your voiceover voice for the beginning of that sentence. Mm. And it really did make a little bit of my brain sort of think that you were you knew what you were talking about lifted it a little bit you had it? authority i saw arthur smith last night doing gig or at least i was listening to him over the tannoy right. he was on after me i did a gig in greenwich right and uh, one of the things he was saying was he's fed up when morning djs sound all perky mm. and he said you know i'd like to hear a dj that sounds the way you really feel in the morning like oh god it's so early i'm so depressed it's so you know but you don't want that do you you want people to g you want. Well, if you want that, you listen to Vanessa Feltz or or John Gaunt or one of those <laughs> furious early morning right. ranty DJs. Right. Feltz isn't furious, but you know the, one of the ones that gets you wound up yeah. about spurious things they've read in the paper that are probably inaccurate in the first place. But it's, uh, you know, part of a DJ's job is to lift the mood a little bit, I think, uh, don't you think? Well, you did it very well. Yeah. So, Text the Nation this week, listeners, is all about fun names that you give your body parts. <laughs> Nicknames for, you know, not just your winkle zones. There's a nickname right there. But other parts of your body as well. Give us your ideas. You can text them or email them to us right now. Adam and Joe at uh, six music at bbc.co.uk is the email or the text is 64046. Joe, you've got a few suggestions from our listeners that have come in there. Haven't you read them? Yeah. <laughs> Here's one from Alex in London, and this hasn't been officially given to me. I just happen to have spotted this on the text readout board. Uh, and, you know, I'm going in with a slightly edgy one just to get this out of the way. <laughs> Alex says, that my genital, okay. yeah. singular, has come to be known as the sadness. <laughs> I tried to name my testicles, Michael and Bubbles, but it hasn't caught on. Can you help? Mickey Bubbles. Well, hopefully, Alex, we will be able to help because uh, we're going to be offering a lot of suggestions for alternative names for body parts. Here's one from an anonymous texter who says, My boyfriend calls my boobs, open inverted commas, the guys. Mm. The right one is guy one and the left is guy two. Not guy Ritchie. No. That's, <laughs> that's very bald and basic, isn't it? You have Guy Garvey and Guy Ritchie. Both those suggestions are better, but it's just the guys. The guys. That's a nice name for them. Do you think? Yeah, what about, do you use any pet names? I think it lacks imagination. I'm not saying necessarily for your partner, but just maybe your mother. <laughs> no, I don't know. You're <laughs> <laughs> for my mother's what? <laughs> I'm pressed. So I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. It's all right. <laughs> dirty pillows. Let's move on. What about that? Have you ever heard them referred to as dirty pillows? Yeah, that's in a film, isn't it? Isn't it? Is it Evil in War or something? Mm, oh, it's, some, it's some kind of... Um, kid that's been brought up in a repressed atmosphere and oh i'm sure it's from something and she doesn't want anyone to touch her in those places get off my dirty pillows, get off my dirty pillows. <laughs> <laughs> if you know where that where that reference originally Amish, came from maybe. i've Amish. got it in my maybe uh, it's witness no it's not witness dirty pillows no! <laughs> Mr. Henderson, you're touching my dirty pillows. My dirty pillows. <laughs> Here's one from PJ in Liverpool. I call, I call <laughs> my mum's left ankle George and her right ankle Mil Mildred. I just don't believe that. No. Why would you? Because why would you? In what, what would situation be the point? would you be referring to it? Unless you pick you're... these out, Charlotte. You pick these out, right? I'm looking at Charlotte now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's the next one. This is from Lucy in Stoke Newington. Good morning, Adam and Joe. My boyfriend calls his bits. His Vera and Duckworths. He he. Vera Duckworths. Hmm. Uh, here's another one. Big Jim at work in Wymondham. Wyndham. So, no, it's not spelt like that. Yeah, but sometimes things are spelt in a different well, way to that. the pronunciation. It's the fourth one down. Wymondham. Yeah, Wyndham. That's in Norfolk. That's very really? near. Yeah, that's near to where I live. In Wymondham. He says, a few mates and myself, this is good, all have double chins, but we all refer to them as giblet chins. Ah, yes. Not sure why, but we do. Yeah, there you go. Uh, th well, in Ally McBeal, they referred to uh, that bit under the jaw as the wattle, didn't they? The wattle. Um, yeah, that might be the actual name. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's got. Has he got something to do with it? What a turkey has. Yes, exactly. So when you go uh, grow up and your uh, skin starts sagging all over the shop, that's the other thing. Is once you pass forty and your body starts betraying you, your in all kinds of betraying you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, your body's absolutely betraying you as well, isn't it? Mm, maybe. <laughs> maybe. You know, well, 
everyone's body betrays them a little bit and once you're past 40 the chances that you're going to get betrayed go up considerably and the wattle is one of the first things you get isn't it the, the skin starts sagging around there that's if it hasn't you know george lucas he's the king of the wattle right yes he's got a hell of a wattle i mean he's got all kinds of he keeps snacks and stuff tucked away in that wattle wymondum <laughs> you can't believe that something is spelled why so would you spell it like that if have it's you never seen like you know the chumleys and the uh, fanshaws didn't you do you remember that dance company the right. chol mondelez and the featherstone well, that's different. it's like when someone's called owen yeah and then their name is spelt in some amazingly elaborate welsh e manner eogin or something e e yeah like eogin what was he called on the Quig. x factor Quig, yeah eogin Quig. You're absolutely bowled over by that, aren't you? You can't believe it. Wymondum. They... Wymondum. I've got to go there and talk to them about it. There's another place <laughs> nearby. The there's another place very near Wymondum that's spelt Costessi, and it's pronounced Cossi. So you can really get a lot of egg on your face with that one, let me tell you. <laughs> Joe, this is a great explanation, and we're going to come back to it later on in the programme. So just hold your horses there, and we're going to play some more great music for the listeners right now on Six Music. Here's Bat for Lashes with Sleep Alone. Lovely Natasha Khan, Bat for Lashes with Sleep Alone, here on BBC Six Music. This is Adam and Joe. How are you doing, listeners? Lovely to have you along this Saturday afternoon. How are you doing, Joe? I'm all right. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, good. I've got a bit of a cold. Sorry about that, listeners. <coughs> but, uh, I was thinking yeah. the other day that you and I, Adam, Adam and me, went to school together. Yeah. And we used to have Saturday morning school. That's true. Do you it? remember that? Yeah, sure. So one way or another, you and I have seen each other on Saturday mornings. A lot more than most friends, you reckon? Mm. I mean, what has it been now? 25 years? Something like that. 27 even. A long time. Yeah, we met when we were 12. That's Every Saturday morning. 28 years, mate. That's got to be some kind of uh, scientific sort of anomaly, hasn't it? Uh, yes. I mean, I've probably spent more Saturdays, well, way, way more Saturdays with you than with my wife or anyone else in my life psychologists must be able to do something with that mustn't they well, like i'm thinking we could profit from this somehow <laughs> <laughs> how on earth could you profit from i don't that? know i don't know somehow we've got to be able to make money out of it get somehow. some kind of radio show we could couldn't we yeah we could get paid is that what you're could thinking we? No, would we sure. no no one ever would here's a free play this is griff Rees jones the popular bbc presenter and this song is called lonesome words is he the guy that used to be in super furry animals yeah is Mel Smith also in Super Furry Animals? Yes. Oh. That's the Matles with M Monkey Man. Is that just the Matles on their own without the Toots? Toots was in there as well, wasn't There's he? Toots in there. That was Toots and the Matles then with uh, Monkey Man. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Maybe Music. Toots wasn't involved. Oh, no. In which case the Matles will be absolutely furious. Why is everyone always going on about Toots? You know, we did stuff without Toots sometimes. When we play Toots and the Matles, it usually says Toots and the Matles, and that just said said the Matles, so let's go with that. The, the castle wouldn't get something like that wrong, would it? I don't think so. Listen, a moment ago we were talking about Dirty Pillows. Mm-hmm. And we were wondering what film that came from, and oh, yeah. millions of people texted in saying it's, of course, from Carrie. Is it? Piper Laurie's character says it to Sissy Spacek, the mum to the daughter. She says, uh, where is it? Somebody's quoted it. I can see your dirty pillows, says Carrie's mum. They're called breasts, mama. That's right. Says Carrie. <laughs> but I, I, it, am I right in thinking that it's a literary reference, though? Did someone else use the phrase dirty pillows before that in a book? Or was that coined for Carrie? I think it's Chaucerian. Was it? Sounds like Chaucer. Sounds You're like the word dirty of pillows. Your dirty pillows. Now, Joe, did you see um, on Channel Four this week on Thursday, "Alone in the Wild"? No, but I saw the trailers, and it looked like it was going to be very heavy. It was a remarkable like documentary. documentary. Yeah, Ed Wardle is the name of the guy. I don't know who he is. Right? Have you ever heard of Ed Wardle? No. He's a Scottish man, and he looks a little bit like Fran Healy from Travis. Mm. Like a slightly um, more roughy, tufty version of Fran from Travis. Mm. And he was dropped into the unforgiving Yukon wilderness with just basic provisions and cameras to film himself as he attempted to survive completely alone in the wild. It's a series, right? And I would, I would guess that this guy is a... Um, experienced documentary maker himself because it's very well shot like he's doing it all himself he's all on his own i really like that as a format for yeah. a doc uh, so he's totally on his own but he's got some really creative camera angles and he does a lot of things where he straps the camera to yeah. poles or himself or whatever so it looks a bit like scorsese uh, mm. in the bar in mean streets every now and again you know mm. and um so it looks really nice and i have a few anxieties sometimes about 
how long it took to construct some of the shots you know what i mean like he 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 does a lot of there's one bit where he dives into the water off a rock and you see it from several different angles like first of all you see him on the rock talking into the camera holding the camera saying yeah i've always wanted to do this i'm just about to dive into the water off this rock it's amazing oh it's going to be so wonderful and then you see a wide shot from somewhere else of him diving in so you think right so he had to he's gone the, all the way around the lake he's gone all the way around the lake he would have had to set up that shot walk all the way back dive in come out walk all the way back round. Did he dive in and swim across and put the camera there? Right, maybe. In which yeah. case, that wouldn't be his first dive. But I always feel as if I'm being slightly lied to. I mean, I know that's just the language of documentary. I'm not supposed to think about it. But I want to see him, like, he's got to do a shot. I want to see the shot of him walking over to the camera and repositioning it, you know? Mm. And saying, I've just got to reposition the camera now for the shot of me diving into the lake, which I've always wanted to do. <laughs> you know? All that. Surely it's full. It must be full of mo- I mean, that could drive you mad, isn't it? Full of moments like that? Yeah. I mean, it would be impractical. It would get in the way of your enjoyment of the narrative, maybe. But the thing that really stuck out is the... And I don't want to sound cynical about it, but the slight pointlessness of the whole thing. Like, it is interesting. It is certainly mm. interesting seeing this guy out in the wilderness and stuff. But you always have to come back, or rather he feels he always has to come back to why he's actually doing it. And in those situations, there's, there's really not very much of a reason. What's he doing? What's the objective? Well, just to see if he can survive there right. for a while. Right. Without being killed by bears. Right. Or breaking his ankle. Right. You know? How far away is he from civilization? He's quite a long way, but he's got a little orange GPS um, message sending thing, which he has to press every 24 hours. To say that he's alive. To say that he's okay. And has he got a destination? Is he going somewhere, or is he just settling in the same place? No, I don't think so. Here's the blurb uh, that comes with the opening episode. Ed is flown into the Canadian wilderness. As the plane disappears, he's instantly overwhelmed by the realization that he's completely alone. He finds it hard to make decisions, but manages to set up camp. He's frightened and nervous of every sound and movement around him. As the day goes by, it dawns on Ed that the escapist dream is a lot harder than he ever imagined. This is exactly what happens when my girlfriend goes away. (laughs) Yeah, it's like a description of me home alone so by day four how are you doing i'm nearly dead well he's in trouble by day four he's only been out there four days camping right and he's had no bear contact at this point although he's frightened fair enough but by day four he's already falling apart he sees a plane flying overhead at one stage right and he gets his cat oh look there's a plane flying overhead (laughs) and then he starts crying does he i don't know i don't know why i'm crying it's just so shocking to (laughs) <laughs> I see that plane going over it, it didn't even stop or, or try and look at or anything like that. He's totally falling apart on day four. He sounds like a bit of a, wu- a He's wussy. He's a tiny bit of a nance. <laughs> Maybe, well, that's more dramatic, a isn't it? Bit of a dress. It's better than putting, for instance, hard man Jeff Capes in right. the wilderness. But they should have called it dress in the wild then. <laughs> Lonely dress. Hey, but one. listen, this is only part one of, of exactly. several, right? And I read a trail for next week uh-huh. that says he nearly dies. Well, the, the other thing is that he's... Apparently he genuinely did nearly die. Really? Right? So that makes it better, doesn't that it? That makes it more fun. <laughs> well, he, he just, at one point, he justifies the whole exercise thus. This is doing something extraordinary. I'm going to learn a whole load. The, the, you know, there may be a life-changing experience in this, and that'll be good. I want to fill my life with extraordinary things, extraordinary adventures, extraordinary learning situations. I want to do extraordinary things all the time, and I think that if I do them, then my life will be exciting and vital and worth living. Is it too late, and is he too far away to find him and punch him? <laughs> but that's his whole justification. He just wants to do, and he must be about early 40s, I would say. And uh, all he wants to do is just extraordinary things. Do you know what he'll discover? What? He'll discover that it's actually nice at home. That's the thing, isn't it? People, that's always what everyone learns. Also, you'll get used to it. And after a while, he'll think like, I want to go to the extraordinary toilet in like an extraordinarily comfortable lav and things like that. Anyway. I wanted to catch up on telly. It was enjoyable, though. I'll certainly be tuning in next week. Thursdays, 9pm, Channel 4, Alone in the Wild. Uh, This is Camera Obscura right now with Let's Get Out of This Country. Joe of TV's Adam and Joe show has which surname? Stick at it, Joe. They'll they'll remember your name one of these days. Cornish. That was the mighty Coldplay with Strawberry Swing. No idea what that was about. Were you listening to the lyrics? (laughs) No, I wasn't listening to it at all, to be honest. I was preparing some text the nation entries but uh sounded nice though but i wasn't really concentrating on thematically what he was banging on about 
Mm. Strawberry swing. I mean, that's they've gone all uh, township as well. Did we talk about this last week? Oh uh, yes, was like it this record, the very best that off? Mm. Uh, was the township record, wasn't it? Featuring the guy from Vampire Weekend. Right, but was that Coldplay? No, no, no. That was the very best. So this is another band jumping on the whole um, Graceland. Well, they did by it. Paul Simon bandwagon. I guess so. That was Eno they're working with there, though. Really? Yeah. I see Eno jumping on another bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> he was one of the first people to do all that mixing up. Um, he manufactures the bandwagon, doesn't he? Yeah, he's the bandwagon man. He does the wheels and stuff. Yeah. He does wonky wheels. Do you think he invented South wagons. African music? Do you think yeah. he went on holiday there, like, very, very... Pretty sure when he, he invented, was very young. He invented South Africa. Did he? He found it, and he set it Just up. Just opposed a couple of words. Yeah, he got some cards out there, and, uh started reading them out to the locals and that was how south africa was born he's not responsible for the bad parts of course not the apartheid and stuff like that that's when eno was off the job text the nation time now sorry do you have something else no <laughs> <laughs> let's have the jingle text the nation text 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 the nation what if i don't want to text the nation but i'm using email is that a problem it doesn't matter text so Text the Nation this week, listeners, is all about uh, alternative names for parts of your bodies, pet pet names for cankles. parts of your body. Have you heard the phrase cankles? Yes, I have. Uh, that's a lady thing, is it? Is that in Sex in the City or something like that? Is uh, it? What is it? When your ankles th- get, like, all rough and nasty? No, it's when you're, um... No, Charlotte knows. Luke it's shaking it's when there's what no difference between your calves and your ankles. They kind of merge ah, into one. Ah, cankles. You get cankles. Wow. It does sound like what you said earlier, doesn't it? Like mm, rough skin mm, deposits. Mm, mm. <laughs> Here's one that's come in from Robin in Brighton. My breastfeeding children call my wife's left breast the big milk... And the other one, that one. <laughs> <laughs> they were very particular about which one was required. Wow. I've never heard of that before. Like special loyalty to a left or right breast. I don't want that one. Not that one. Give me the big milk. <laughs> <laughs> the big milk. It's like some tawdry Channel 4 <laughs> early morning program. <laughs> That's right. Uh, here's one from Dave. <laughs> Dave says, Adam and Joe, I call my girlfriend's nipples... The Pointer Sisters, for <laughs> obvious reasons, as they stick out like a couple of chapel hat pegs. Chapel hat pegs? I don't pegs. know, that's what he said. A couple chapel hat pegs. <laughs> and that's on a warm day. <laughs> What's a chapel hat peg? That's what he's written, I'm just oh, reading out what he's Oh, it's a hat peg in a chapel. Right, right, yeah. right. But why a chapel? On a cold day, she could take someone's eye out. Have they got particularly big pegs in chapels? Chapel hat peg. Yeah, it's very descriptive. Well done, Dave. Thank you. Here's one from Mark in Birmingham. My seven-year-old son, James, calls his nipples, armpits and testicles his underpips. Underpips? (laughs) He calls all of them his underpips. Whoa. That's, um... That's not very specific, though. You've got to narrow it down. No, not very really useful, life. is it? If he hurts one of those and just refers to it as the underpips, the yeah. uh, first aid people are going to be very confused. <laughs> my underpips. Here's one from Lou in Bury St. Edmunds. Morning, Adam and Joe. My friend's little girl started to ask what her girl bits were called. Her mum helpfully said, you can call it what you like, darling, to which her little girl replied, Harry Potter! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one. It'll be good for later in life as well. Um, woo woo. Uh, that's what the Americans call them sometimes, isn't it? My Twitter? Wa- yeah. My wife's joined up toes are called the Websters. The <laughs> Websters? Says Nick from Bristol. <laughs> Lee in Essex says, I used to call my man parts a dingle. This was, in my mind, the official name for it, so imagine my amazement one day when my grand took me to Bournemouth and there was a a department store called Dingles. (laughs) (laughs) I still remember my amazement and bewilderment. Wow, imagine the selection. Uh, imagine the selection that they would have there. Well, dongle is the other word that I always get confused about. Like, when someone started referring to the little bit of stuff that you plug into a computer as a dongle, I was like, you what? Oh, yeah, you just need, you need a dongle for this. I was like, what, what? A dongle? What are you talking about? A dongle? David Armstrong in West Sussex says, I call my buttocks my bumgo drums. (laughs) Bumgo drums, because my mother used to play them like bongos when I was a small child. Ah, that's a fun game. Really? Yes, playing the buttocks of a small child. Have you not done that? Not when your mother's in the Thompson Twins. It's got to be your own child, that's the thing. And she pulls you on stage. Like Alana... Ten times a week. Alana Curry was her name. Yeah. What are you talking about Alana <laughs> Curry for? Because she takes the child on stage and plays his buttocks as bongos. 
I'm going to play the bumgo drums now. <laughs> Don't worry, listeners and audience members. This is my own child. You have to do it with your own child. You really switched around there. For a moment, you didn't know what I was talking about, and then immediately... I was trying to get, but dying. get into the scene. When we were children, says... Can you not sigh like that before you... Why? Does it sound like I'm bored with what I'm about no, to read? Sounds like no, I'm not bored at all. I'm excited. It sounded like ennui. I'm gearing myself up. Okay. I was just trying to figure out how to say this person's name. Alice in Ireland mm -hmm. says, When we were children, my mother taught us to call our girl paraphernalia our Tutti Frutti. <laughs> you can imagine my surprise when I saw Tutti Frutti flavoured sweets in our local <laughs> shop. <laughs> 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 Let's leave it there. She probably never got into those sweets, even though they are absolutely oh, delicious. delicious. Here's a free choice for you now, listeners. This is from Neil Young's album On the Beach, and it's called Walk On. <laughs> Ruin the end of that song. It wasn't me. That was Lloyd Cole with Rattlesnakes. Correct, that was Lloyd Cole. Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Now, they more or less finished London. Have they? Yeah, They've fine. been working on it for a while. Yeah, it's nearly finished. It's going to be finished by the end of the month. Mm. So in October, uh, you'll be pleased to find the streets are in good order, no roadworks whatsoever. All the cranes gone away? Yeah. All the buildings refurbished? You can drive around wherever you like, no diversions, any of that kind of thing. Were you aware in South London of a lot of roads being dug up over the summer? I certainly am, yeah. My mummy and daddy's house. They've got temporary traffic lights outside their front door. Yeah. And there's no parking, because they're digging it all up. Parking nightmare. It's caused chaos. Absolute mm. parking chaos. Mm. And things were pretty bad there already, as far as parking. Don't get me started. Don't even get me started. The number of confrontations I flipping had with <laughs> wardens around that neck of the woods. But I was curious about what... I mean, they're, they're, they're installing new water mains is the main thing, right? Flash Warden. I've just thought of a new character, Flash Warden. Flash Warden. Warden's alive. Yeah, he's an adventurous traffic warden from right. space. But he would be the hero, though. I don't want a heroic traffic. Well, board. it would challenge your preconceptions. I don't want them challenged. All right. Well, you don't need to watch. Okay, I'm not watching Flash Warden. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's for kids or grown-ups, Flash Warden? It's idiots. <laughs> it's for idiots. <laughs> it's for, I tell you wow, who it's you're for. You're really jealous of my It's idea. for the Warden community. That's who it's for. Is it? It's an in-house production to Warden's make them alive. feel better about themselves. Dum, 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 because dum, morale is so low because they keep yes, having confrontations with enraged customers. It's a kind of customers. little bit of um, propaganda to pick their spirits up. Yeah. Hey, chaps, come on. Listen, I know it seems tough out there. It's a thankless job you're doing, but it's an important one. And here to pick up your spirits is a new episode of Flash War. <laughs> <laughs> I'd do the job. It's a really good idea. It's a good idea, certainly. But listen, I was curious about whether they found anything while they were digging up the roads. Mm, yes. Like Time Team style. Right, right. Tony what? Robinson might come running in and tell them they can't fill the hole up because he's found an old spoon. That kind of thing. <laughs> I mean, what? They, might have, they must have found all manner of Sounds treasures. like I'm being disdainful towards the school of um, digging. What's it called? Dig school. <laughs> <laughs> What's it? Archaeology. Archaeology. I'm not. I think it's brilliant. Yeah, of course it is. Indiana Jones, man. He done it. He done it. He's wicked. If he does it, it's got to be cool. He's got like a whip and a hat and stuff. So what's your problem with like dig school, yeah? Yeah. Um, I was thinking, here's a list of things I think they might have found buried beneath the mm. uh, tarmac in London over the summer. <laughs> <laughs> You know this is going to be like a... <laughs> I can't. You can't even imagine. Go on. A comedy list. <laughs> say, the, <laughs> say the first one. A pyramid. Because <laughs> they haven't been around for... <laughs> Pyramid. <laughs> another. Say another one. <laughs> Ali Sheedy. Right. <clears throat> She's, yeah. Because she hasn't been around for so long. <sighs> she doesn't live in London, though. So that would be far, that's far-fetched. She may have slipped down a manhole when she During was a doing holiday, promotion. promotional for the last, yeah. yeah, for Princess Caribou. How about this? Is she in that? Buried, I don't know. It's Phoebe Cates. Buried beneath the um, tarmac in London. Here's mm. what they found. Mm. Together with Ali Sheedy in a pyramid. Common decency. Oh, of course. Yeah. Well, that goes without saying. In your face, <laughs> Ken Livingston. What? Is he still the man? No. <laughs> <laughs> you want one more? 
Yeah. A Tamagotchi. Yes. Oh, an old trendy thing. Yeah. Rejected. <laughs> you That's come good. Up, you do one. <laughs> um, it's not so easy, is it? What are you doing? That's something push, else. Nah, no, I can't think of one. Oh, I need time to prepare. Yeah, you do. All right, I'm going to do one more, and then we're going to go straight into the next men with round of applause. Felix Howard. All right? It's weird. That is a bit weird, isn't it? Sorry about that. <laughs> There you go. That's your round of applause. That was The Next Men. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. We are going to be playing our Song Wars bath songs in the next half hour, but right now it's just gone 11.30 and it's time for the news. Sounding fresh as a daisy, Kate Bush with Hounds of Love here on BBC Six Music. This is Adam and Joe, and we are going to give you another chance to hear our extraordinary Song Wars bath songs. But first, the jingle! It's time for Song Wars. The war of the songs. A couple of tunes by a couple of prongs. Which will you vote for? Which one is the best? We're putting our songs to the listener test. So check it out. Yes, uh, I'm going to play my song first because we played them in the other order before. See, so we're going to swap them around. Do you anticipate, and I'm not saying this in any kind of prejudicial mm. way, do you anticipate anyone giving you a hard time about, like, the flight of the Concords doing Bowie's in space and then you doing Bowie's in the bath. Uh, possibly. I mean, we've been given a hard time about being similar to Flight of the Concords before. Similar but worse, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think, I mean, I've done a lot of Bowie-esque 80s songs. That's what I think might be my um, downfall. Right. I've done a lot of songs using that kind of voice. <laughs> uh, it's a fun voice. Sing lines like that. <laughs> it's very satisfying to do. Well, so have I. I mean, I've done loads of songs like this, you know, because it's a fun, especially when you got a cold, it's nice to talk like yeah. that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's why I was excited about your vocoder action, because I thought, wow, he's got a new vocal sound mm. at, at this stage in the game. That's right. That's quite an achievement. Well, you'll hear that soon. But first, here's Joe's. This is. This is the song that Bowie sings, David Bowie sings when he's having a bath. Here it is, called Bowie Bath Time. Crazy day, rushed off my feet. Tonight I deserve a special treat. I know a place I can be alone. A private palace of enamel and crown. A sacred space where taps are spun. And man and water live as one. Look, scented oils and shampoo. A place that's just beside the loo. Splish, blush. Tonight's gonna be Bowie Bath Night. Splosh, splish. Bowie. As I get in, the water's rise, engulf my dangly bits and thighs, the scalding heat, a knife that cuts, this can't be healthy for my nuts, I pour a little bubble bath, I froth it up and sing and laugh, and then the special business starts, the scrubbing of the Bowie parts, if you want to take a bath, then please take my advice, be sure you don't drop off to sleep, cause it's so warm and nice, don't sit there staring into space, just fiddling with your winky, don't forget the water's getting gradually more stinky. Splish, splash, I'm polishing up my glass spider. Splash, splish, I'm soaping my serious moon. Splash, splish, it's time to get out of the My fingers are starting to prune. Oh, I'm just eating a banana during that, and it's got a rotten bit in it. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I didn't think bananas could go rotten. Well, they get brown, but that's the I thought, nice... Th I thought they got more delicious. Yeah, that's the sugary stuff there. This one's turned. Has it? Never really tasted that before. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's horrible. Do you know Bowie's just had a real spider named after him? Really? Yeah. A genuine spy, a German spider specialist, told the Observer newspaper. He named a new species after Bowie. Um, Pete Jaeger, who's found 200 new species of arachnids in a decade, says he's named it Heteropoda David Bowie. That's a bit like the Mercury Music Prize, isn't it? That guy just wants to associate himself with David Bowie. And get a bit of a story bit going. Of a boost. It's like the Mercury people just want to associate themselves with the latest rapper. That's right, isn't it? 
Yeah, we've, we've taught them a lesson, lesson, haven't we? We certainly have. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. But listen, that was song number one. That was called Bowie Bath Time. That's Joe's song. You can vote for that. Adam and Joe.6music at bbc.co.uk is the email. Or you may prefer to vote for the following song. This is Special Bath. <laughs> Oh girl, you're so dirty I love your mucky mind But your body's all so filthy Which I weren't so pleased to find You're so fit, but what's up With your personal hygiene That's why you haven't had a boyfriend Since you were 13 You have the matted hair of an Australian backpacker And in your pants last night I found some cheese and a cracker You say you don't like bathing Cause you're frightened of the water But it's getting crazy, girl, you no, I really think you won't I'll come round to my place tonight We'll have a special bar Stop smelling like a vagrant And take the fragrant bar I've got some candles, some petals Some radox and some lady and some badass So lower your badass into the bubbles and the water Which is slightly too hot like you but you'll get used to it the way i had to do with the smell from your shoes just take it slow when the pain from the scalding subsides it's nice sit at the end where the taps are baby that's my advice it's more convenient you know i'll take the boring end cause i'm your special bar friend come round to my place tonight we'll have a special bar not so bad is it it's nice it's just a couple of rules you need to know before we go on you might assume that heavy petting in the bath is fun but it's uncomfortable and makes it hard to get the cleaning done and perhaps you think that with the bubble bath you're safe to let one go but trust me that's not how it works and when the bubbles burst i'll know when finally you may believe that a tinkle in the bath is chocks but if i detect extra warmth i'll call the cops Come round to my place tonight We'll have a special bar Stop smelling like a vagrant And take the fragrant bar I wanna rock with you lady woman If you know what I mean But there's gonna be no rocking Unless you're really keen There you go, that's my song, Adam's song, and it's called Special Bath. And you can vote for both those songs uh, up until midnight next Friday. Um, by that's right. Just email. Yeah, you just you have to email your vote, adamandjoe.6music at bbc.co.uk, and we will put them both up on the blog, not so that you can download them, but so that you can listen to them and make sure your vote is fully considered. Yeah, and they'll also be available on the podcast as well. Of course, you can listen to them there in the context of the whole battle. And, of course, we'll unveil the winner on next week's show. Very exciting. And play it in full. And the person that wins that, it'll be like the M M Mercury M M M Music Prize. I'll say that again. James, for the podcast, you can chop that bit out, all right? The live listeners uh, don't mind. It'll be like the Mercury Music Prize, <laughs> right? And the winner will just, um, just what? Fade away and never be heard Ooh, again. Oh, you're Ooh. cussing the Mercury cussing Music the Prize Mercury, again. Boy, I was joking, right? I'm just joking. Uh, you know, think of all the people that have won the Mercury. The Arctic Monkeys, mm. Pulp. Mm. They're not flashing the pants, no. are they? What you said was bullies. Absolute bullos. BS. Here, let's play some real music now. This is the Dodos with Fables. Very nice. That's the Dodos with Fables. Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. So what's the last album you bought in a shop, Joe? Can you remember? Wow, that's a good question. I bought the uh, Prefab Sprout reissue thing, the uh, Let's Save the World with Music, but I bought that uh, as a download. Oh, did you? I'm trying to think of the Physical last... Physical purchase. I can't remember the last wow. time. I did, I don't think. Flippin' neck Tucker. It's probably quite an old one. Yeah. Probably a reissue. I bought... I, I sort of backed up my Prince back catalogue recently. Uh-huh. 
because that's the best thing when you find those classic albums for like three or four quid yes that's true or a whole like you can buy the whole of uh tribe called quest output for about 15 quid mm. every single album and they're amazing albums yeah i know it's ridiculous you suddenly find bowie albums and stuff for three quid or whatever all piled up there and that's the other thing is that when the reissues come out and the new digital masters and stuff the unmastered ones go really cheap yeah, yeah that's true and often that's all you need really it's those ones mm. you've got a little free play for the listeners right now yeah good question though thanks very much yeah was kept things little bubbling on just talking over so what, what, what i did, oh, i was thinking like it's not talking about music right because mm, mm. it's like a music show yeah we're nice. just about to introduce your free play yeah, it all connects so i start talking about music what's mm. the last album mm. you bought that's brilliant right and then we just get chatting about like yeah, shops yeah. and it all ties into and then it peters out you know and then it sort of peters out, peters out. Little, because neither of us have silence. really got anything to no, say peters out can't remember it's rubbish, what, it's can't remember what it was that we bought that was good didn't really tie into all the things i was hoping it might tie into mm. like the death of the music industry mm. and high street mm. shopping in general None of that really happened. <gasps> <laughs> Instead, it just sort of fizzled. Here's a free play. This is the... Uh, now, how did we agree that we're going to pronounce it? The Chai Lights. The Chai Lights. Like highlights. Yeah. Uh, this is a message. Even though you say that they're called the Chai Lights because they're from Chai Cargo. But I think if you're from Chai Cargo, you say, I'm from Chai Town. Chai Town. Right. Yeah. You Usher got, says that. Does he? You've got to be careful yeah. the way you say that. This is a message uh, for Broken Britain. For its shattered streets. Is it? For the terrible class divisions. For the shattered streets. That exists with in the Britain. pyramids buried beneath. Yeah. This is called We Are Neighbours. Yeah, we're neighbours, so stop fighting each other. It sounded kind of overdriven, that song. It was sort of topping out because it was so exciting, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly what's happening. That was the Chai Lights with We Are Neighbours. This sir, has been Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Thanks very much for listening, especially if you've listened since nine. Do you think there's anyone who's listened to the whole three hours? Maybe someone on a long car journey? A couple of people, maybe. Somebody in hospital? Someone bedridden, yeah. Yeah. Well, we really hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for sticking with us. It's been a pleasure having you along, and we hope you'll join us at the same time next week. Stay tuned for Liz Kershaw, who's coming up shortly. Don't forget, you can check out our blog, bbc.co.uk forward slash blogs forward slash Adam and Joe, and do get in touch during the week via email or via the blog. Yeah, we'd love to hear, uh, you know, we read all your emails and stuff like that, and, and uh, the more the merrier, so please do get in touch. Right now, here's Hot Chip with Over and Over to play us out. Thanks very much for listening. Take care. Love you. Bye. Bye.